Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the off-grid garage. Yes, that's the correct channel. Well, I've put these three solar panels up here for you the other way around so you can see the connections actually. Um, this is probably a follow-up video to my last one when we put this fuse holder on top of the garage here. The question I'm seeing popping up on forums and on social media and do you need to fuse your solar panels? And when do you need to fuse them? What's the purpose of it? And when should you and when you have to? So I thought I'd do a little tutorial here, a training video for you guys and tell you more about fusing of solar panels. So I bought these three solar panels here a while back to repair my solar system on my roof. And, and they are identical solar panels. So the question is now, do you need to fuse them or not? Well, actually, of course, every electrical circuit you should fuse, just for the sake of safety, of course. And as you know, all solar panels come with two cables, one positive and one negative. And now you can arrange them in a certain configuration, either on top of your house, of your garage, or on your RV. You can either put them in parallel, all the positive cables together with such a branch connector. And they are coming in different types as well. Some are for two panels, some are for three panels, or even for four panels to put them in parallel. So you plug all the positives into this branch connector and then at the end you've got only one main positive coming out of this connector. And you do the same with all the negative cables of your solar system. So all the positives of all three panels together and all the negatives of the panels together as well. So, and what this means then is, you can see here on the solar panel, voltage at maximum power point is 37.1. And this would be exactly the voltage you get when you put them in parallel, around 37 volts for all three panels. So now let's have another look at the label here. This is the highest current in the maximum power point, which is 5.11 amps. So even the voltage will not change in a parallel configuration. The current does add up. So you've got 5 amps from this panel, plus 5 amps from this panel, plus 5 amps from this panel. So all in total, you will get a total solar system with 37 volts and 15 amps, three times 5 amps. Well, yeah, and this is exactly how it looks like now. We've got three solar panels and we put them all in parallel. So positive goes to positive, goes to positive, and this is our main positive. And you do the same with a negative, goes to a negative, to another negative, and then we've got the main negative. And this is where we connect our charge controller or our load. And the voltage we get here at the end is the same as all the single voltages. And this is why you should make sure you've got the same panels in parallel. They should have the same voltage. So ideally, so ideally you're using three the same panels to put in parallel. And then we've got current coming from this panel, from here and from here, and all the current is adding up. So the main current consists of current one, current two, and current three, all in total, but the voltage is the same. So this voltage is the same as this voltage, the same as this one, as this, and the same as the main voltage we are measuring. So this is just very basic stuff to explain the parallel connection of solar panels. What happens if one of the solar panels is faulty and you have a short inside this panel? So the internal resistance is very low and you don't produce any electricity in this panel anymore because the internal resistance is so low, the current will not go to your load anymore. So the current will go from this panel and flows this way. And the same will happen from this panel, the current will go this way. And you can imagine if you have five more panels and you have all them in parallel and have one faulty one, they're all feeding their current back through this panel to close the circuit. So what this means is this panel is designed for 5 amps. It says it there, 5.2 amps. 
But in case of a fault, we already have 5 amps from here plus 5 amps from here and potentially another 5, another 5, another 5 from other panels and they're all flowing through this one here. So what happens? Of course, this one gets really, really hot and potentially could start a fire. Well, and to prevent this from happening and being on the safe side, and this is, I cannot, I cannot stress enough about this. We need to be very safe with everything we do here. If you are not 100% sure how things work, please ask someone to give you a hand, to give you some help, advice and assistance. So don't do anything because just you are assuming it may work. Safety is our highest priority here on the channel. So the solution, of course, is to put a fuse in each of these solar panel connections. And this is a holder for fuses. So how this works, you open this one here. And here we've got our fuse. This is an RT18. This is just the size. And you can see 10 amps. And because... I want to focus... And because we've got 5 amp solar panels, the 10 amp fuse will work perfectly in this system. So you put the fuse in here, in this, and then close it. And it looks like a circuit breaker. And, well, pretty much it's a similar function, you know. It disconnects your circuit if we go over 10 amps now. And you can see this fuse holder is rated up to 32 amps. And eventually we will have three of them installed in our fuse box on the garage. So each for one panel. Well, and now you are saying, well, we have 10 amp fuse, but the solar panel produces only five. So this one will never, this one will never trigger or protect anything. Yes, you're right. Under normal circumstances, this fuse should not trigger at all because the solar panel delivers only a maximum five amp and the fuse is 10 amp. So there's no reason for this fuse to trigger and disconnect the circuit. But now you may already see what's happening. We will have another five amp from this one as well as here. And because we've got a faulty panel, they are both delivering their current to this faulty panel. We've got 5 amp from here plus 5 amp from here. So we are already reaching the 10 amp rating of this fuse. And if you imagine we have another panel here which, which delivers another 5 amps to the system, which would go into the faulty panel, we would have 15 amps here and the fuse will trigger and disconnect our faulty panel. So it all depends a little bit what kind of solar panels you have, what the rating is, what the amps are, what the current is, the voltage is. But you can see we've got, we've got 190 watts on each panel here. And if one of them is faulty, the other one would produce 190 watts and push this power through the faulty panel. And then there's another 190 watts coming from the other panel through the faulty panel again. So you've got almost 400 watts of power going through a faulty panel, which is designed for 190 watts only. But if you fuse them individually, there's no harm because the fuse will melt and disconnect the faulty panel. So in, in a parallel connection where you connect all the positives together, make sure you've got a fuse in each solar panel string to protect your system. Well, eventually protect you and your property as well. Okay, let's quickly do the other scenario we have when we put these solar panels in series. So that means the positive of the first panel goes into the negative of the second panel. And this positive of the second panel goes into the negative of the third panel. And then you've got one main positive and one main negative. There you go. One positive, one negative. And we've got them connected in one string now. There you go. Positive, negative. Positive, negative. This is our main positive. This is our main negative. And now what's happening is the current of around 5 amps will go through this cable into this panel. This one will push these 5 amps again to this panel. And this one will push the 5 amps through our main positive to our charge controller. And then the 5 amp come back for this one. So the current in this case is not adding up. 5 amps is our maximum current we are getting in this configuration. But 
the voltage now. We've got around 36 volts on this panel and these 36 volts will be on top of the 36 volts here and this will be on top of the 36 volts here. So we have three times 36 volts which makes in total 108. Yeah, this will be 108 volt all in total. So if you measure from the main positive to the main negative, you will have 109 volt of DC. And this is already dangerous. You don't want to touch the positive and the negative at the same time when these panels are out in the sun. Okay, and quickly let's have a look at the series connection of solar panels now. We've got them all in a series connection. So the positive of one panel goes into the negative of the other one and this positive goes in the next negative and so on. So you can string them up and you can clearly see here that the current from one panel goes into the next panel which has the same current rating. So the currents are not adding up as in a parallel connection. But you can see the voltage 30, 36 volt, 36 volt, 36 volt. So our main voltage is the sum of all the single voltages of your solar panels. And again here you should make sure the solar panels have the same rating and the same figures. Okay, and let's do the same scenario. We have a faulty solar panel here which has a low internal resistance and it doesn't produce any power anymore. So in this case we have only the voltage from the first panel plus the voltage from the third panel. But this one is not producing any power anymore. So our main voltage will drop by one third and whatever you have connected here, solar charge controller or a load, may not work anymore because one third of your power is missing. And because as we have just learned the current is the same in all solar panels in a series connection, if one of the panels fails there's no increase in current going through this panel. So the current does not change and therefore we don't have an increase in temperature. Nevertheless, you should have a fuse in your solar panel string. And in this case, this could be a 10 amp fuse again because we have a 5 amp current coming through this solar panel array. And if one of the panels is faulty, the current does not increase. So in a series connection of solar panels, the current through the panel stays the same but the voltage is adding up depending on how many solar panels you put in series. So from a safety perspective, it looks like the series connection of solar panels is a far better deal because you need only one fuse and in case of a faulty panel, you don't cause a fire, you don't cause any problems at all. This looks much safer, right? So why would you put panels in parallel instead of series? So we need three fuses for a parallel connection of three panels and we need only one fuse for a series connection of three panels. So this looks like the much better deal. Well, you need to, you need to fuse every single of your panels, right? Why would you put solar panels in parallel instead of putting them all in series? And the answer of that is because it depends. <laughs> it, it totally depends what kind of system you have. What are you doing with these solar panels? What are they charging? What kind of solar charge controller have you connected to it? If you put them all in series, you can charge a bigger battery with a higher voltage already. If one of the panels has only 36 volts of nominal voltage, you cannot use this panel and charge a 48 volt battery, right? Because the voltage of the panel is lower than the voltage of the battery. So you need to put at least two panels in series to create 72 volt and then charge a 48 volt battery. So as a, as a rule of thumb you can say if you have a stationary system with a bigger battery 24, 36, 48 or even 72 volts it makes sense to put all these panels in series and put them on your roof of your house or your garage or your shed whatever you have and then run them all in series with one fuse and one solar charge controller to charge your battery. And also think about an RV which has a 12 volt board system. If you want to charge that, you put one of these panels on top of the roof and you are done. And then later down the track, if you need more power in your RV, you put another panel on top of the roof and put them in parallel with the first panel. And they both charge your 12 volt battery. Well, this gives you a rough idea when you use parallel and serious connection of solar panels. And again, from a pure safety perspective, you should always fuse your solar panels as well as your batteries. I will talk about connecting batteries in parallel and series in one of the next videos. It is actually almost the same.
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions about this. I think it is very critical to understand these basic rules in how to connect solar panels and batteries. And of course, we will apply these rules now by setting up the solar panels here on the off-grid garage. You have already seen me in the last video mounting the fuse enclosure on top of the garage. And this enclosure will, this enclosure will carry our four fuse holders here three panels in parallel and one string in series. All right, guys, as always, leave all your questions or comments down below under the video. Yeah, let me know what you think and we shall see us again in the next video very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See you then. Bye bye. Ah, before you go, don't forget to subscribe. Is it this way or this way? Just as a quick update, the other delivery of our batteries is on its way. So it can't be far off and then we make a decision how to proceed with the off-grid garage. All right, see you then. Bye-bye.